Our gospel reading this morning comes to us from Luke's gospel, the 13th chapter. Listen now, friends, for the word of the Lord. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand, to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for eighteen long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Don't rock the boat. Go with the flow. Don't make a fuss. Straighten up and fly right. Be a team player. Try to fit in. Why can't you just be like so-and-so? Don't fight it. You can't fight City Hall. Ours is not to question why. <laughs> cliches, but cliches with a similar theme, aren't they? Uh, an idea that we should kind of go along with things, go along, fit in, try to, try to not make too many waves, right? Another cliche. <laughs> then there are also cliches about being unique, being yourself. Be yourself, we say. Be true to yourself. Don't float the mainstream. That's actually a beer slogan, but I like it. Don't float the mainstream. Climb your own mountain. Choose your own road. So on the one hand, the conventional wisdom would seem to be, would seem to be just, just fit in, you know, don't, don't draw extra attention to yourself. And on the other hand, we're being cha- it's, it, you know, it's, it's being championed, I think, more and more in society to, to, to be ourselves, be, be who we are. And we find, though, and we've known this from a young age, that if we do that, if we are different from others, we'll, we'll pay a price, won't we? Being different can distinguish us. It can make us also a target of scrutiny and scorn. And and we learn when we're young that if we wear the wrong clothes, that if we come from the wrong neighborhoods, if we use the wrong slang, uh, we get the wrong kind of attention, don't we? So why be different? Today we wrap up our why series. We've talked about why bother. Why bother when um, it just seems like everything is stacked against us and, and, and how could we possibly make a difference in the world? And then we talked about why care. Why should we care? There's so much hurt and hardship. Again, we can't, we can't fix everything for everybody. Why, why care? And then today we're talking about why be different. And I'm going to attempt to discuss why be different with the most unimaginative of formulas, the three-point sermon. (laughs) Little little pastoral humor for you there. Just bear with me. One of the the pastor in the crowd laughed, you know. (laughs) Look, I'm going to give you three reasons why we should be different. One is because you are unique. God created you. We hear Jeremiah, the, the word comes to Jeremiah, before, you were, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. God created you. God knows you. 
And, um, it, you know, if you look in Scripture, it's, it's, very, it's very interesting that almost every call narrative is different. If you look at the call of Moses or the call of Abraham, the, the call of different people of faith throughout the ages, they're different. They're unique. God encounters people where we are. God encounters you where you are. You have a unique story with God. Be unique. Live in that. Jeremiah was a different kind of guy. We've said this before. He was a prophet who had to do, had to say um, some things that were different that maybe people didn't always want to hear. It landed him in rough places, but he did it all his life because he knew it was worth doing. And you may remember if you were here back then in January, we started the year with our running uh, with the horses series that was based on Jeremiah's life and a book by Eugene Peterson. And, and we said if, if, if we will do this in 2019, it can be an incredible year. If we'll live inspired lives and run with the horses, live out our faith, uh, learning lessons from Jeremiah and other heroes in our faith. So how are we doing with that? Do you remember that series? I don't want to ask for a show of hands because I just don't want to know if you really do remember it or not. But how do we feel like we're living in that? Are we being ourselves? Are we, are we living the life that God has for us? Not just, not just for ourselves, but living through God the life that God has for us. Living in God's spirit, living in God's will uh, for us will lead us to a different life maybe than for others because everyone's call is different. You are equipped uniquely by God for service to God's people. We're going to be talking about more about call in the coming weeks, but I just want to remind you of, of David's words in the psalm, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God made you and not a robot, and isn't that great news. Two, why be different? Because being different is fun. As Dr. Seuss said, today you are you. That's truer than true. There's no one alive than, that is youer than you. It's energizing, friends, when we're living out that call that God has given us. When we're, when we're living out our purpose, there's an energy. There's, there's something fulfilling there. It's exciting to be living and doing the things that God has called us to do. And we know it. We feel it, right? You get in the zone like athletes talk about. You know when you're doing what God made you to do. And it's wonderful, isn't it? It's fun being different. It's fun living as God intended for us to live. And I'm not talking about being different today just for the sake of being different. We're, we're, not, we're not talking about being different just to be different. We're talking about being who God calls us to be. And that'll be different enough. Because we will bother. Because we will care, as we've been talking about this month. And that right there will already set us a little apart from much of the world. And that takes us to our third point. Why be different? Well, because if we follow Jesus' teachings and if we follow Jesus' example, we are going to be different. Christians are different for a reason. We're called to be different. Paul told us, do not be conformed, right? Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. John told us to be in the world, but not of the world. Right? We're here, and we're working within the world to bring about God's good purposes, but we're not necessarily of the world or worldly. And then we get Jesus' example this morning from our passage in Luke, where Jesus is defying expectations very boldly. Jesus goes into the synagogue on the Sabbath. He sees someone who uh, clearly didn't have the favor of God, right? At least according to the religious authorities in that time and place. She had been crippled all those years. And Jesus defied the expectations of the, of the synagogue leaders. He defied the expectations of everyone around him by seeing her 
and acknowledging her as a human being. And, and, then, and he loved her and did something to help her. He healed her on the Sabbath, seemingly breaking the law he came to perfect. For a rabbi, he sure was different. For a teacher of the law, he was different. And so if we follow Jesus' teachings, if we follow his example, we're going to be a little bit different as Christians. And do I need to even say that as Presbyterians, we're different too, right? Even within Christian circles, um, you may have noticed we Presbyterians are different, are often observed as being a little different from others, perhaps. Uh, in our tradition, it's important that we all have our, our own understanding of God, a relationship with God, a faith informed. In fact, uh, the, the, the emphasis that we have on education and Christian education, but historically just education and being able to read, that goes back to our belief that everyone needs to be able to read Scripture. Everyone needs to be able to have a relationship with God on their own. Everyone needs to know and experience God and the truth of God and the gospel of Christ. And so we read Scripture together and we encourage people to chew on it and we ask good and tough questions and we seek good answers to them. We don't just follow worldly voices or even voices in the church just for the sake of it because we dare to ask good questions. I've always been uh, struck that some outside of the Presbyterian church have these ideas about us. Maybe you've encountered them. I grew up Presbyterian. I grew up in a PCUSA church. And I was surprised to find a little bit later in life that we had a bit of a reputation. Who would have guessed it? Uh, about being kind of radical, maybe. A little out there. And, and, I, and, and, I, and I always thought it was funny that... Um, you know, a people that, that, that have to form a committee to accomplish any simple task would be seen as being so radical and so threatening. <laughs> but ask any of our youth. You know, especially if they're, they're in a public school and they're encounter, or, or homeschooled and they're encountering uh, Christians of other faiths. If the other youth, their, their classmates, don't think they're a little bit different from being Presbyterian. We're different because we think about things. And, and, and like I said, we ask questions. We ask good questions, tough questions. Like, why does the Bible sometimes contradict itself? There are a lot of pastors out there that would not like for me to say that from the pulpit to you. Don't tell them that. <laughs> Thank you. Don't tell them that. That might challenge their faith. I actually think it's an encouragement of our faith that we get to wrestle with these things and struggle with them and ask good questions. Have I said that? About our faith and about God. We're actually going to be asking those kinds of questions about Scripture the next couple weeks in our Heads, Hearts, and Hands uh, Sunday School class. So if you're not already attending an adult Sunday school, I hope you'll check it out in room 116. Look, I love my brothers and sisters in Christ and, and other uh, Christian traditions, so, so I'm, I'm not, not trying to be critical, nor am I talking about just being Presbyterian here. But we know it. Many of us know it. If we, you know, if we are steeped in Presbyterianism, there's something a little different about us. But we're already different as Christians. We're already set aside. Being different has some implications, though. There's a tendency in our society when we uh, recognize differences between us and others to isolate, to want to find our own tribes, to want to find groups of people that we fit in securely and snugly enough that we don't have to feel different or uncomfortable or threatened by other people's differences or feel like we have to change to fit in with others' expectations. And I understand we want a place where we feel like we can be ourselves. But there's a danger in our growing tribalism and in our society that we don't all end up in our own bubbles. That we don't end up um, 
in an echo chamber, in places where everywhere that we go, we just hear the same voices that reinforce what we think we already know. If we're around people always who are always like us, how will we grow? How will we meet new people? How will we share the gospel with others who are different from us? How will the world become a better place? How will goodwill between different kinds of people happen? There are lots of echo chambers out there today. We find ourselves in a variety of them. I know this one may be a touchy subject, but please bear with me. Um, I want us to consider the voices that we hear often. If, 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 if you have one source, for instance, of political news and commentary, and that one source only, I'm going to challenge your thinking in that. I don't care if that source is, is, is a liberal source or a progressive source or a conservative source, but I want to challenge you to listen to a variety of sources of information and commentary about it. Whether it's on radio or TV, some of us, I know, we turn on the TV, put it on a certain channel at the beginning of the day, and leave it on all day. And I challenge you to think about whether that is conforming us to the world and worldly ways of thinking about things. We want to be informed, certainly, but not conformed. So set a timer. Turn it off after so long. Read your Bible. Read Christian theology. Read good Christian books. Listen to Christian podcasts or podcasts of people who are, who are helping you to grow in your faith, in your life, in your profession as a person. Read your Bible. I think I said that, but it's worth saying again and again and again. Look, at it, 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 at least as much as we listen to that, that one particular news source that you may rely on for commentary, listen to other voices, what I'm trying to say. And I'm not, I'm not criticizing the media. They do good work, uh, and we are to be informed, right? But we're to be informed, not conformed. Um, we want to be transformed. And, we're, and, and that, that call as Christians to, to read the Bible and you know, have the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other, and we talked about that the last couple of weeks in Sunday school, one of the Sunday school classes, that is important. That is important that we engage. But, but let's not get our, our worldview uh, from these sources, from a singular source of, 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 of news or commentary, let's get our worldview from our faith. I've said that before. You might hear me say it again. Let's make God our God. Let's not make a, a political platform or our, our political social views our God. Let's not uh, make our pleasures or our desires our God. Let's let God be God. Let Jesus be Christ and follow. If we do that, we'll be different. We'll be very different. And I think that's really exciting. <laughs> what, what a wonderful adventure that can be. Let's be different. Let's be different. Amen.